Lutherans stand out from most other Protestants by believing and teaching that baptism saves. In the words of Martin Luther from the small catechism, it works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this as the words and promises of God declare. It's not because we have some soft spot in our heart for some unexploded part of Roman Catholicism from the Middle Ages, it's because the Bible actually teaches this. Specifically, beginning with uh, verse uh, 1 Peter 3.21, which says in so many words, baptism now saves you. <laughs> not as the washing the body, but as the request to God for a clear conscience, for a clean conscience. So baptism saves, not in the quality of the water washing away dirt from you, but in the fact that this baptism, this application of water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is a prayer, is a plea. The Christian is doing it in order to be saved, in order to be cleansed and given the Holy Spirit. At Acts 2.38, when the first gospel had been preached by the apostles, uh, Peter especially, after they had received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the stricken, conscious stricken Israelites listening to him asked, what must we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent and believe every one of you uh, and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Two statements right there that are routinely denied by most Protestants but are right there in the first proclamation of the gospel uh, by the apostles after Jesus Christ had given them the Holy Spirit to send them out into the world to build his church. And if you go throughout the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is associated with baptism. When people are baptized, they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the early days, in such a way that it is visible and therefore everybody knows that it has happened and there are, there are miraculous gifts associated with it so that you can actually track the progress of the Holy Spirit and it comes along with baptism. Even the one case in the Bible where somebody receives the Holy Spirit before baptism, when St. Peter is preaching to Cornelius and his fellow Gentiles, even that is done so that Peter knows that the Gentiles are in fact to receive baptism. Peter, going back to Jerusalem and being called on the carpet by the council there, why did you baptize Gentiles? He says, well, I was proclaiming the word to them. And then they received the Holy Spirit. They began receiving the Holy Spirit just as we had. And I said, can anyone withhold water from them? Because he knew that was the normal order of things. You give them the water and then they get the Holy Spirit. In this case, God did it in the other way in order to teach him, yes, the Gentiles are involved. The Gentiles are included in the church which remind us that God can do it either way. God can do it however he wants. God can save people without baptism. But he sent the apostles out into the world to preach and make disciples and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that is how the church makes Christians. That is how the church saves people, by proclaiming the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name and washing them with the washing of regeneration, washing their sins away. Baptism and washing away of sins is explicitly linked in that way. And this is something that uh, most Protestants do not deal with honestly. Uh, they, see, they see verses like this that say that baptism saves and they say, well, that's spirit baptism. That's, that's spirit baptism. That's an internal thing that happens when I believe. That's got nothing to do with water. The water is just a post hoc symbol that demonstrates that this has already happened or that allows me to confess to the world that it has already happened. But that is not what the New Testament says. The New Testament links them together, and if anything, the water is causal. The water is, comes before the Spirit. You are washed, and then the Holy Spirit comes upon you, which, if you think about it, is the way it happened in Jesus Christ's own baptism at the River Jordan. It was after he had come up out of the water that the Spirit descended on him, and the voice from heaven proclaimed him to be my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the New Testament teaches that baptism also is how we are buried with Christ and raised with Christ in order to share that sonship, to be in Christ. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, uh, if we have been baptized, we have been baptized into his death. And if we've been baptized into his death, if we have shared a death like his, we will surely also share his resurrection. And he makes it explicit that the resurrection, which is our blessed hope that Christianity, we are saved um, not just forgiven and then left in the grave, we are saved and freed from the penalty of sin 
and given eternal life, that resurrection with Christ is predicated on our having died with Christ, and our death with Christ happens in our baptism. And this is why the Augsburg Confession of the Lutheran Church says that baptism is necessary for salvation, 